First of all, the concept of the seven inch. What are we going for with that? We, we apparently wanted to be famous. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I was in the Oswalds and we decided to, we wanted to put out a seven inch. So what we did, Bob had went out and bought an eight track cassette machine. And that, and so we recorded an Oswald seven inch on it and it turned out, you know, uh, so, so not really bad at all. And then it just, Mikey comes up to me, hey, this Saturday, uh, Clavin and, and Stopper are gonna record their seven inch at my dad's house. You know, you wanna come over and help help me out with it. Uh, it was crazy, we, we pull up and uh, it's like this, uh, you know, it's like his mom's house or something. He's like, oh yeah, it's cool. I'm like, okay, cool. Recording happened. I was just impressed that everybody managed to get in the same place at the same time and actually record some stuff. I showed up to record a white t-shirt covered in blood. I remember Mark being like, what the fuck? Hung over as fuck. So we'd been like drinking and doing cocaine all night. And uh, that started that long ass day of uh, recording badly and knowing that it was going badly. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember, all I remember is recording it and laughing too hard and having to do it in the bathroom because every time I looked at the band I'd start laughing. That's what I remember about recording that album. <laughs> Everybody else was way too concerned with getting fucked up. That's the one thing I remember about that, me included. You know, I was no exception to the rule that day, but so that day, that, that, that whole experience, a lot of it was a fucking blur. I thought the sound, overall sound quality wasn't that great, but back then, it's like you weren't trying to make a hit single. It's, it sounds like we're drunk and having a good time. That's what it sounds like. But kind of like ass. <laughs> Everybody was so fucked up that day. I don't hardly remember shit other than it getting done, and I remember all of us sitting back and saying, uh, then, wow, that sounds like shit. It'll work. I remember being so jealous when I finally saw the Stopper Clavin split. I was like, I want to release a record. But then you heard it. Yeah, but then I heard it. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was pretty rough, and I can't imagine a world where you'd listen to that and think, ah, this is suitable for, uh, for capitalist endeavors. I also remember I thought it was really cute that we punched the girl's nose out on the, on the Clavin side. And who this chick is... Yeah, where'd that come from? Who this chick is on this side, I don't know. Somebody, I want to say Dave, thought she was cute. Some skinhead chick. So we put stopper on her t-shirt and made this happen. Somewhere, this girl's probably hating us right now. <laughs> no, it's not handwritten. Is it not? No. Pins. There's only two things dedicated to dedicated to all former members of Stopper. <laughs> the only other handwritten thing, lyrics, because no one can understand the songs, not even the band. Yes, we had to print that in there because it's kind of fucking true. <laughs> Jason and Mark thanked all of these other people. Dave would like to thank no one but himself. And Ian would like to thank the Somber Reptile and the Oswalds for fucking up our dat. <laughs> we made the decision, I thought, as a band, like, you know, let's just chalk that up to a complete waste of fucking time and resources and throw it out the window. And we'll uh, wait until, you know, get some money together and uh, go ahead and go into the studio and actually record something worth listening to. Some, something that we're not going to be embarrassed to say is, is our one uh, feet put on the tape. But uh, that didn't happen. Somewhere the, there was a communication breakdown. And before you knew it, um, you know, Mark always came to band practice and told us what was going on with the band, you know? And that day he came and told us, like, so I sent off the, uh, the demo to Maximum Rock and Roll. And we were all just kind of like, 
why? I don't know where the idea came up to send it to Maximum Rock and Roll to review. As far as I was concerned, why were we making it into a seven inch? It sounded terrible. Why were we doing this? It sounds awful. Wasn't the, the stopper recording, like wasn't that sent into MRR just because Mark was excited? <laughs> the reason we sent it to Maximum Rock and Roll is because it was a seven inch. It looked good, clear vinyl. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why we really sent that thing to Maximum Rock and Roll, but uh, I'm glad we did because that's the epitome of fun. Listen to what Crass's shit sounded like when they sent it into record labels. Listen to what all those other punk bands, what, what they were, what they were sending in. They just did not get what we were doing. And quite honestly, I, at that point, I wasn't quite sure what we were doing either. It was, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with them more when they said the record sucked. You know, ultimately the seven inch was, was disappointing because what, what Stopper really embodied was their live show that was really, really, you know, something. When you listen to the songs on the seven inch without the, the, the show and you didn't see Dave hopping around, you didn't see Wilson running around in his whitey tighties, uh, you didn't see Mark just, just being Mark, uh, it lost some. The kind of the genius behind the band was the don't give a fuck attitude. You know, who would have who would have thought something so shitty? We'd still be fucking talking about it this many years later. I don't know why I'm still talking about it. Not like I'm getting paid to be here.